Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, we are a minimalist family of seven. So there's myself, my husband and five children and we are living big with less. And today I'm doing a highly requested video, which is how we manage paperwork and artwork and all the paper things whilst being as minimal as possible. So guys, I have so many questions and comments from you guys, which I absolutely love about how to manage paper clutter. We all have so much paper coming into our house, particularly if we have children who are doing us beautiful works of art and bringing home all sorts of notes from school. So I'm gonna tell you how I handle it and how I keep it as little as humanly possible because I find that the simplest, but please, just take what you like and leave what you don't. There's certainly no hard and fast rules. We don't own a business. We don't um, have a huge amount of tax paperwork or anything like that. So if your situation is different, please tailor these tips to whatever suits you and whatever works for you and your family. So my first tip is reduce the flow. And so this is a tip for minimalism all round, but I always give people the analogy of if you've got like a leaking tap or a broken tap, the first thing you wanna do is just stop the water from coming out. And that's gonna help you, before you try and deal with anything else, just stop or reduce the flow that you've got coming into your home. And so that is doing things like getting bills emailed to you instead of receiving them in the post, stopping any catalogs or magazines that you're not reading or loving, or if they're just encouraging you to consume more, maybe you could consider getting rid of those too. Another little tip that I have that I find really helpful is when I bring the mail in to the home, if I go through it straight away and I just make a get rid of pile. So I might keep the registration bill for our car, but that will also come with like uh, personalized plates, um, advertisement, it'll come with an envelope, and so I'll get rid of all of the excess paper that I don't need straight away. And so that's already reducing the amount that I have. Another small tip which kind of goes along with that is try and touch the paperwork once as it comes into your house. So if your kids bring you a letter from school, if you've got some sort of command center, um, I personally use my planner for that, so I'll have a look at it. If there's something that needs to be addressed, I'll quickly write their name on it, sign it off and put it back in their school bag. But if I can touch it just once, that means it's not sitting around, it's not getting lost, it's not in a pile somewhere waiting for me to deal with it. I'm touching it once and getting it done, and then I'm getting rid of anything else that I can. So guys, this is a big one and it's not gonna be for everyone, but my second tip is to go digital for anything and everything you possibly can. So we use a fantastic app that's available um, in the App Store and it's called ScanBot and it's just basically a app that you can use that will scan a document and convert it to PDF and then we save it in the cloud and it's there when we need it. This is so handy. I can't tell you how many times it's been so great because not only is it saved and safe, I also have access to it on the go. So if I'm at somewhere where they need to see my kids' birth certificates or if they need to see my license or something and I don't have it on me, I've always got those things on my phone. So my tip is if you can, scan all the things. Scan them all. Now this same tip can be used for photos. So there are heaps of apps out there where you can scan in photos, especially older ones. And this is such a great tip because it's a three-way win. It's a win because you don't have to hold on to those photos if you don't want to. The second win is if something happens to your home, if you have a fire or if there's a flood or something happens or the photos get lost, you know that they're always backed up in the cloud. The third win is that photos and, and memorabilia 
it's going to degrade over time. So if you've got it for a photo of it backed up to the cloud, that's not going to degrade. The photo is not going to get dull. The color's not going to run out because it's all saved there. So what we use is we upload all of our photos to Google Photos and then you have access to them. It's also a great way to actually use more of your photos because you can search for things. I don't know how many times I've gone in and I've wanted to look for a Christmas photo from a few years ago or a photo when Ruby was five. It's so easy, I just type in the date or Christmas 2015, whatever I'm looking for and it will find it. Or if I'm not sure exactly when it happened, you can even type in wedding and it's smart enough to know all of your wedding photos and it will pull them all up for you. So that's a great way of managing photos without actually holding on to the physical photo. A big thing to remember when you're going to go digital is two is one and one is none. So if you are going to go digital, you need to be able to be backing up your files somewhere else because if you lose those files you've got none if you've got it backed up somewhere else really you've only got one because if you lose one you've got one left so the ideal situation would be to have it saved in three different locations so that might look like on your computer in the cloud and on a portable hard drive and that way you've got redundancies there if something happens your files are still going to be safe so I get asked lots of times why I don't have photos around my home and it's not because I don't like photos or I don't have a soul, it's just because I was terrible at updating them and my kids would get upset because like there was a photo of the two older ones and I hadn't updated them or where were their baby photos and it was just, I could never get the time to go and sit at the photo booth and get photos printed out and so I was so terrible at it that it was just causing me stress. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I just need to find a better way. And so my husband suggested that we take, uh, we create a shared um, photo sharing album on our phones, which is shared by myself, my husband, and our sort of close family. So my brothers and sisters and Kayla's brothers and sisters, and everyone can save photos to this file. So it's constantly getting updated. Almost every day we're adding new photos and then those photos play on my TV and the TV in our girls' bedroom. And so when they're listening to music or an audio book or if I've got music on in there, those photos are playing all the time. It's actually my screensaver in there. So anytime this, the screen is just going blank, it will go to all these photos. And I can't tell you how many times I find my kids in there sitting down, just enjoying the photos that are constantly ticking through. They're always updated, but at the same time, I can look back at memories of when my, my big kids were babies and all the fun things that we've done without me having to physically go and sit at the photo booth and get the photos printed. There is absolutely nothing wrong with getting your photos printed. If you were great at it and you love those photos, please definitely put them up in your house. But if you're not good at it, this is a great way of using the photos, seeing them every day, enjoying them, but without having to get them all printed off. Okay, so my third tip, especially for those of you that maybe have a lot of paperwork that you already have, is be brutal. So if there is stuff that you're not sure about, my suggestion is, Take a photo, scan it, and then let it go because paper multiplies. So if you've controlled the flow and you're scanning as much as you can, the rest, the umming and ahhing, be brutal. So one of the, the things that I had noticed I had a lot of was manuals for things in my home and I discovered that I could find them all online. So all I do is I go on, make sure there's a manual there, download it, save it to a file, and then let that manual go. The other thing is I often just YouTube how to do something. I'll type in my washing machine and how to remove soap dispenser to clean, and then a YouTube video will pop up for me and I don't really have to read the manual, which would probably confuse the hell out of me because I'm a visual, very visual person when I'm learning, so that's really helpful for me. But if I can let it go, I absolutely will. And I promise you, 
you, you're not going to regret having less paperwork to deal with in the end. So my fourth tip is all about managing kids' artwork. And my top tip for that is if you enjoy to have it displayed, absolutely do that, but just have a specific space set for it with some boundaries. So maybe it's a little um, ribbon that you could paper clip the things on or use a peg to put them on, or whether it's the side of your fridge or wherever it is, just set a limit for how many you can have at one time. So if it's five or six, and then decide what you wanna do with them afterwards. So whether it's that they're happy to be fed to the recycling bin, or we take a picture and then let them go, or just keep a selection of our favorites. What I find with my kids is that it's really about that attention after they've done something. So I will sit down with them, I will get them to explain to me what it is, and we'll have a laugh, and I'll maybe put it up somewhere for a short period of time. We also have a craft box. So if it's something they want to hang on to, we can pop it in the craft box to look at at another day. Um, the other thing I really like to do is take a picture of my kids holding that picture. Then I know exactly how old they were when they made this beautiful artwork, which kid it was that made it. And then um, if it's something that we really love, you can set it as the screensaver on your phone. And my kids get a really big hoot out of this. They think that, you know, they're a, they're a star on my phone and I get to enjoy both them and their beautiful artwork on my phone. And then once we've finished of enjoying it, we can feed it to the recycling bin. Whatever way you try, however much you decide to keep, just set a boundary for it. Whether it's two boxes or three boxes, for me, I just keep a small file in our filing cabinet. Well, it's not a cabinet, it's just like a filing box of paperwork. All the kids have their own little file and my absolute favorites or their absolute favorites go into that file. I go through it periodically and get out anything that may be wasn't exactly the best of the best or there was others that we prefer and then I keep the ones that we really really love and then they can go back. Something that I always think about is if it were me and I was moving out of my parents home again how much stuff would I want to take with me into my adult life? Would I want to take one box, two boxes, three boxes? For me I am not a super sentimental person so it would be just a small folder of my life's artwork that would be more than enough i really appreciate my own school yearbooks whatever is right for you and your family is the best but just set that boundary so that you're telling the artwork how much you want to keep and the artwork's not telling you so guys my fifth tip is to get a paperwork routine so you've bought your, the paperwork into the house it's come in with the kids or it's coming through the mail and then what are you going to do with it next so for me, it's a combo of my planner and my filing box. So all of the paperwork in our house is in one of these two locations. So my planner is for things that are currently going. So whether it's an appointment slip, a invitation, um, a note for something for church or mops, I put that in here. I either put it in the front of my planner or I put put it on a paper clip on the day that it's needed. So if one of the kids come home with a birthday invitation, I'll pop it on that day. And so when the day comes, I've got all of the information there. I'll also set a reminder in my phone for both the party and the RSVP. And so I don't forget to do either of those. But this is where I keep the paperwork that's ongoing. So another thing I would do is put like school paperwork. If there is a free dress day or a sausage sizzle at the school, I'll send the school paperwork back with our order and I'll keep the rest of the paperwork here so I remember what the times were and what the, the details were. You could also digitize this. My husband would love it if I did, but I still like to be able to see things visually. So that's why I keep it in my planner and that's sort of like my ongoing paperwork. This is all the rest of the paperwork and I keep in here stuff that's already been processed. So once the bill has been paid or whatever it has, has been actioned, if I do need to keep it, it goes in here. And as far as tax paperwork goes, we get these little envelopes from 
our tax agent. We put all of the paperwork inside and we keep everything digitally as well. So we have a little folder for each tax year and then the originals go in here. If we ever get audited, it's as simple as pulling this and attaching everything in the digital file and that's everything ready to go. So the other things that are in here are like important paperwork, like birth certificates and passports. Each child has their own little folder for creative pieces of paper, artwork and things. And then they also have their own file for school paperwork. So that's um, school reports if they don't get emailed, which most of them do. Um, but anything from the school, car paperwork, anything that we need to hang on to goes in here. So that's my routine, but whatever your routine is, maybe it looks like a command center as you walk through the door that you can have a to be filed, to be processed, or maybe it's that you have a folder in your filing cabinet with stuff that's ongoing and then you file it away after that. But once you know what the system is, you're gonna be so much more able to process it and move it through all the different things as opposed to maybe leaving it on a pile on your desk or a pile on your kitchen counter which is probably driving you nuts. So guys I hope that has answered some of your questions. I'm sure that there are things that I have forgotten so if you do have any questions please leave me a link to our comment down below. I would absolutely love to hear from you and love to hear any tips that you have for managing paper clutter. If you're new here, we would love you to subscribe and stick around. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and we'll catch you guys in the next one.